Don't Good ask too much. Good to see you. Cold hands, warm heart. So do you remember any of these places we're going to see? Well, of course I remember that? this. This is where we are here today. My favorite church, St. Andrew's Presbyterian. I used to sit right over there. My favorite spot. And of course, the minister here was W. Leslie Clay. He was the head of the Victoria Library Board, and he was the minister in this church. That's why we're here tonight. And his daughter, you know, his daughter is Margaret well. Clay. That's Margaret Clay. She was a member of this church, and she was the head librarian in Victoria for, for 28 years. And I trained Margaret myself in my training program here. Oh, look at Margaret. So lovely to see her again. And she, she never married, did she? Neither no. did you for that matter. It's very interesting. Many librarians of our time would not marry, including myself. Often, Margaret served under men who had less training than she did. And if, and if, the, if the women did marry, they had to quit their jobs. Very true. So they remained single. Like myself. And you recognize that building? My favorite building. Margaret and I served here for many years at the Carnegie Library here in Victoria. The corner of Yates and Blanchard. It's still there, and it still has a sign saying, saying library on it. It still stands. How lovely to hear that. And this woman here, Alma Russell. You know Alma. Of course, I know Alma well. She was the first trained librarian in the province. Now, you were the first trained librarian to come to a public library. She worked for the legislature library. Yes, Alma was not fond of public libraries. <laughs> but she was very good at the legislative library, and she started one of the most important resources that we have, which is the BC Newspaper Index, one of the best resources for historical research today. And what about this? How on earth did you find that, Dave? It took some effort. You know, he embarrasses me. This, and the reason that you became interested in library work was because you read an article. In Home Ladies Journal. Lady, Ladies Home Ladies Journal. Home Journal. Ladies Home Maybe. Journal. You were, you were in Winnipeg at the time. You saw the article in Ladies Home Journal, and it was about how to run a library, how to bite, be a librarian. I was inspired, what can I say? But you'd never been in a library. How could you be inspired? It was a wonderful article. And based on, that, based on that article, off you went. To New York Public Library School. And you took the training program there. One year. And then worked in the children's library, well, in the children's department in one of the branches in New York before coming back to Canada. I love children's libraries, very yeah. fond of them. And a man named E.O.S. Schofield, Schofield, sorry, who was running the, running the um, Victoria Library Board at the time, put an ad in a variety of newspapers looking for a new assistant librarian, and you applied. I answered that ad, and I arrived in Victoria on October 15, 1910. 100 years and a few months ago. You worked in Victoria for a few years, then you went, you went off to war for a few years, or, or for, for a year went off to help during the war. I helped in the war effort in France. In nursing? I. I helped with the soldiers. I twisted the gramophone and gave out coffee. Lifted spirits, really. What, whatever, whatever you could do to help. Them. Whatever I could do. Okay. Came back, worked again for the, for the Victoria Library for a while, and went off to get your degrees. And then were lured back to the province after the Carnegie Foundation decided to start a demonstration library to show what a rural regional library system could be like, a library that actually crossed municipal boundaries for the first time. It to was the 1930s during the Depression. And you managed to, to convince the people there that library service mattered. I did. Even with quite the lack of funding, I was able to convince people. I traveled around with a trailer filled with books and showed people what a library could offer. As, as you were driving around in the Fraser Valley, helping people as best you could, uh, there were times when you actually crossed, by mistake, crossed into the United States of America. That wouldn't be possible today. But the roads were not great back in the time. Uh, I the, the, must admit that did happen. That is what your vehicle looked like. The van. 
He would, he would park at a butcher shop or a crossroads or a gas station. A store, anywhere really. And people would come from all around and they would go fiction on one side, non-fiction on the other. And they would check out their books. You'd open up the sides and you'd come up and there was anything you liked. I've heard, I, I, I hate to tell you this, but I've heard that you were not a very good driver. I've heard that Honestly. you learned how to drive so you could do that. Would but you I, have a look at the roads? Yeah. That, I believe they call that today the Trans-Canada Highway. That's, that's near Langley. Interesting. But, you know, really, I don't see a problem with that. People, other people got through. I got my license specifically for the Fraser Valley. But these roads were treacherous and I was working 18 hour days, six or seven days a week. How did you survive doing that? Mostly on tea and almonds, raisins. Snacked a lot. Why did, you, why did you work so hard doing this kind of thing? It was just I a was, job. I was committed, Dave. Committed? You should have been committed. You were working hard. <laughs> Where is that? This is Kelowna. Kelowna. What a lovely place. Off you went. After, after the success of the library in the Fraser Valley, the, the decision was made to try to get more libraries happening, more regional libraries happening in the Okanagan Valley, in Vancouver Island, and, and the West, West Kootenai. The West Kootenai. So off you went to places like Kelowna, trying to convince people there, in the midst of the Depression. Let me tell you, I was convincing. <laughs> you would have to be. And it's, it's remarkable because both Vancouver Island and the Okanagan agreed to go for library service. I'm just that good. They were willing to. <laughs> they were willing to pay for for library service at a time when they had no money, and the reason for that, of course, they could see what, see the conditions of their own lives, and they want they want their children to have better lives than they had. It was simple as that. This is this is the kind of thing that you had. The vote that was a tough fight. Let me tell you. They had to vote. Municipality by municipality, school district by school district, in favor or against libraries. And for the most part, they were in favor. This man here. Norman. Norman Black. He was responsible. He was the person responsible for the library survey that was done in 1927 and 28. Um, that was the survey that prompted the Carnegie Corporation to, to put up the money for, for the demonstration library. It showed the need for library service all across the province. And his daughter became a librarian, Margaret Brunette, in Vancouver. She worked at that Vancouver Public Library for many years. Did you know it was his sister who trained him? Mary I'm, Black. I'm, she worked at the Fort Williams Library in Ontario, taught him everything he knew. Well, okay. I thought he was pretty smart on his own, but if you, you know. Mary Black was a legendary, well, probably the first, the first really, really prominent female librarian in, in Ontario. He made a huge difference. The first president of the, of the Ontario Library Association. So she might, he might have picked up something from her on occasion. This woman here, Jeanette Sargent. It's lovely to see that you have written about her. You know, so many women librarians do not get the credit they deserve, and that, you honor her here. That's very true. Jeanette Sargent was trained by one Helen Gordon Stewart here in Victoria. She went on to run the Public Library Commission um, regional office in Prince George for 30 years, starting in 1930. So all through the, through the Depression years, she was there running that, that office. Uh, with virtually no money, no budget. She was asked to take books off to, to schools and to, to community halls all around the area, a huge, huge area, basically from, from Smithers to McBride. She was asked to do all of that, and she had no budget for it. She traveled, for the most part, by rail, and she paid her own way. Uh, she didn't have a car for, for the first 10 years she was there. Remarkable woman. And sadly almost forgotten in the library community, until now, because now she's back. Like myself, she was very committed to children's literature. Yes, she started the first, the first uh, school cooperative in that area. And, and that, the school cooperative, uh, you know, sharing, sharing books between different, different school libraries um, was, was, was used as a model many, for many other areas after that. 
what would happen would she would collect all of the books from all of the schools and then divvy them out again based on the needs of each school. Quite phenomenal what she did. Amazing woman.